everybody, thank you for joining me again today. I'm Lee from thecraftyspark.co.uk and today I am going to show you how to make this card that goes with this really cute notepad cover. Uh, post-it notepad cover even, because <laughs> there's post-it notes in there, look. There should be a red pen there, but I think um, a certain small person in my house has come in and pinched my pen. But never mind, never mind, I have more somewhere. I just don't know where at the moment. But anyway, today we are going to focus on matching this card to match this. Now, these are being given to my children's teachers as gifts. They're teacher gifts for this year, but you could also make them for craft fairs. You could make them for any occasion, actually, come to think about it. But doing it as a set like this makes it look really pretty. And as an added bonus, we are going to be making a box envelope for it all to go in. So it will fit in its envelope like that, but I'm doing that on another video. So for today, we're going to concentrate on this one. Right, let's get going then. The first thing you're going to need, as well as a messy desk, is a piece of pool party cardstock that measures 10 inches by 7 inches. Score down the middle at five inches and then cut a hole in the centre of your card that measures three and a half inches. Now I've gone down about, I don't know actually, one and a half inches, a bit more than one and a half inches, one, two, three, four, one and three quarters I've gone down on this one. Roughly one and a half, one and three quarters, doesn't really matter too much. The main thing is, when you actually do it, you've got enough room to put your bow at the top, all right? Once you've done that, you then need to cut another square. Um, I really should get myself prepared, shouldn't I, before I start filming? Oh, dearie, dearie me. I had it earlier. There it is. A square of real red <laughs> that measures three and a half by three and a half because that needs to be able to fit in that gap there okay you're also going to need a gold doily and that is from this set here which is the stamping up metallic foil doilies so you'll need one of those you will need some Santa home for Christmas paper excuse the holes and finally, you will also need, which I've just realised I didn't get out. Yes, I did. It's just there. Some Whisper White card. Um, where's my stamping machine again? And you need to cut your Whisper White card to measure um, six and three quarters by... Uh, let me think, da, da, da. seven and a half. So six and three quarters by seven and a half. All right. Now, before you do any sticking, gluing or anything, just move those to the side. Bring in your real red stamp pad and I'm using Sassy Salutations. Trying not to get it all over myself. Not too bad today. I was covered in it the other day. Ink up your stamp with your six and three quarters. Oops, just make sure I've got it around the right way. Yep, with your six and three quarters down the side, so seven and a half is your long side at the top. Just stamp your Merry Christmas over to the right hand side about halfway ish down okay and then on your card front do it again at the bottom oh every time I manage to stick my fingers in the ink how do I do it I just don't know good grief such a mess Oh, uh, let's close it up quick before I get it anywhere else. 
There you go. Wipe my hands down my trousers. <laughs> That'll do it. Right. Bring in your scoreboard and score with your seven and a half at the top at, whoops, moved all my paper there. Score at two and a half and five. Okay. Put that back out of the way. Now we need to fold our cardstock over and burnish it because this is going to be obviously a, a card front. And then with the one that you've just done on your whisper white, fold it over and burnish it and then fold it back. So what you've actually done is you've created a concertina effect. Okay, now with your Merry Christmas up this way, we are going to stick just this panel to the card. Okay, so I flip mine upside down, then I frantically hunt for my glue, which I can't find, but there's some snail, so this will do just as well. So let's just pop some of that on the back there. Oh, look at that, I even managed to go all over the edge. Good job this stuff just curls itself around again, isn't it? That there we go. You might be able to hear some noise in the background. I hope it's not too bad. It's my um one of my young sons having a little giggle and playing with his brother. One of his brothers, I should say. Right, we're gonna have to fix that in just a tick. Okay. Line up your card. Oops, no, I've got it everywhere now. Line up your card and then just whoopsie daisy try and get it straight if you can <laughs> it makes it look much nicer if it is straight just stick it down and then we just make sure your fingers are clean if you do this otherwise you'll end up with a big dirty mark down the side of your card there we go oh there's a bit more Rub that off. there we go there we go there we go there we go right so that's our card it's now stuck Okay, right, fold your concertina back up, close your card. Now I'm going to use some double-sided red tape for this so that you can actually see where I'm putting it because we only want to stick our tape on that white panel that you can see. Don't want it to go anywhere else. All right. Let's just pop a bit in the middle for luck. Oops, a bit of a squibbly bit in the middle for luck anyway. Now, just set that to the side for the minute. Bring in your real red square that you've cut and your gold doily, nice and pretty doily. And this time I really do need my glue. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, there's one. I'll use this one. So this is as good as any. Oh, wrapper's come off or I've used it so much. Right, I'm just going to put just a couple of, <laughs> hopefully, there we go, just a couple of dobs just round the edges to hold it in place. Only a few bits around the edge because this is quite fragile, these doilies, so I don't want to plaster too much glue on the edges because it'll all show through. Oh, goodness, I really need to order some more of that don't I right that's going on my next order straight away right let's just whoops turn this over and center it on your card about there I think is that about center near enough do you reckon yeah that'll do that'll do that'll do there we go oh smashed a bit never mind right make sure you've got it all nicely stuck down then bring in your santa paper now this is why i have the holes in it because with my two inch punch i am going to punch out a santa um which one should i go for i'm going to go for this little chappy here on his ice skates there we go and then with my snail, let's just pop some 
more some of that on the back. I'm going to pop this in the centre. Oops, a bit of um, leftover glue there. It's going to go nicely in the centre of my doily. Look, doesn't that look cute? All right, and then this is going to be stuck onto here. So we need to take off the double-sided tape. Oh, come off. Uh, <laughs> do you get yours all stuck to your fingers like? Yeah, off me, silly thing. Right, now this is where you need to be a little bit careful. Make sure you've got it nicely lined up before you let it go. Once you're happy that you've got it lined up nicely, whoops, which I nearly didn't there, just glue that panel onto your card. All right? So we've got it doing this. So that is now our pop-out bit for there. But can you see how wibbly-wobbly this is? I don't like that. <laughs> Not at all. So what I'm going to do is... Um, here we go. I have a piece of random pool party here. I don't know where that's been come from. Probably another card I was making. I'm going to cut this at just under five inches because I need it to clear the folds that I've already put in place so just under five inches and then I'm going to score it at just under whoops two and a half inches again on this one just under two and a half inches all right let's move that out the way now these are going to act as my anchors so open your card out like so grab some glue or some tape and we are going to stick these like that all right but what you must do is make sure that when you stuck it you clear your folds now you can see that one is actually going over a bit so I'm just going to trim a bit off the end of that one this one's probably the same as it was the same length yeah let's trim another bit off of that one right and then pop on some glue and I'm just going to stick that just in only very slightly in from the edge of my Whisper White card like that can you see very very slightly same on this one so with that short edge again come on glue same at the bottom just slightly in let's just move it up a bit okay not a huge amount just a mini amount so we've now got these two tabs sticking up. Now, I will tell you now, you will be able to see this if you look down the inside of your card. If you're worried about it, just put a layer of Whisper White over the top and you won't see it. All right. The next thing we need to do is lay it out flat. So I've just folded that flap over because I need to make sure that my tabs don't cross the centre fold of my card. And as you can see, they do. So I'm just going to trim them a little bit more. Right, there we go. One bit there and a bit there. There we go. So that when I lay flat now, see, it's not touching. All right. Pop some glue on. And on that one as well. And then all you need to do is just close your card. Make sure it's nicely stuck down so that when you open your card now, perfect, look at that. It doesn't open flat. I wouldn't be too bothered about it. It's flat enough if I hold it down like that just to write on so it doesn't fuss me at all. But it means that if I just pick up this bit, it doesn't all fall apart now. 
makes it much nicer now the last thing we need to do is our bow so let's grab some ribbon so I had um oh it's a little bit screwed up but that's fine now I'm going to cut uh, about five inches off of this strip here is that going to be big enough Oh goodness, no, that's not big enough. What am, I, what am I doing? What am I doing? Nine inches I wanted. Where did I get five from? Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's good enough for me. Let's just trim off that frayed bit on the end there. Now, I'm going to do a cheat bow on this one because what I want to do is I want to put some curly cord on it as well. So, the first thing I'm going to do double sided tape on the back there just to make sure it holds in the middle peel that off now I'm going to fold this over and overlap by about a quarter of an inch I suppose no more than that really let's just lay it flat because I want it nice and straight straightish anyway there we are that's it right push that down now I'm going to get some of my gold cord where's the end gone oh somebody's pinched the end oh it's right under there look come out there we go I'm going to pull off some gold cord and what I want to do is I'm going to I've just tied it in a loose knot whoops I think the end's a little bit even tied it into a loose knot and I'm going to fold my ribbon into its bow shape so we kind of want it to go like that so sort of pinch it in the middle pop your loop over and then you can tighten your knot up all right don't pull it too tight just yet because if you pull it too tight straight away you're not going to be able to slide it along to make it even whoops which I just did pulled it too tight straight away there we go now that's better isn't it so roughly in the middle would you say yeah I think so Right, and then what I'm going to do, pull it tight, and I'm actually going to wrap this gold cord around the middle of my bow. So that's that side. Now I'll do the same on this side, just wrap it round so that I've got a nice gold centre going on there. Can you see? Yeah, a bit more on this side, I think, don't you? Yeah, that's about right. And then we're going to tie a knot in the back. Tie a double knot in the back, actually, is probably a better idea, isn't it? There we are. And snip those ends off. Alright, so a bit of a cheats bow, but a bow. I'm just going to trim those corners so they don't pop out because otherwise it's going to make my bow look really untidy and I don't want that. So there we are. Trim them off. Right, now before I put it on, oh, let's give it a bit of a wiggle. Make it nice and straight. Before it goes on, what I want to do is make these lovely curly twirly cord because I think that looks quite nice hanging on the front. Now, the way to do that, pull yourself out a nice length of cord. Probably, I'd say, at least three times the amount you're going for. And then you want something to wind it round. Now, I've got a piece of wooden dowel here, which, unfortunately, is not big enough, <laughs> because when I was doing these cards earlier, I managed to burn my fingers. But never mind, it's all I have at the moment. I did have a nice big bit of um, dowel, but I don't know what I've done with it. 
So just keep winding your cord around as you can see I'm doing and push it up tight. Now you want to get it whoops, so that you can hold it at the ends without burning your fingers because in a minute we're going to get a heat tool going. Right, can you see how I can hold it? Let's move that out of the way. Now I can hold it like that and with any luck I'm not going to burn myself too much. Now grab your heat tool, where's mine gone, there it is. Now we're going to put it on the highest setting and just heat it for a few seconds. Okay, not long. So it's on the highest setting. Whoop. It's travelling across my desk. Hang on, we'll get it on the desk prop here, that's better. So I just want to heat it, heat that cord. Now I'm turning it as I'm heating it because what's actually happening is the nylon in the cord is starting to heat up. So I want it heated nice and evenly. Now if I let go of this, it's not going to move. You see? Because the heat from the heat tool has melted it into that shape. So we've done it for, a, I don't know, how long was that? 10, 15 seconds or so? Now I just need to wave it around a little bit to cool it down. If you pull it off while it's still hot, it will just uncurl itself again because it will stay in the shape it is when it's cold. So you might want to just leave it just for a little bit to cool down. Let's just pull, trim those tatty ends off. Yeah, that's, near, that's near enough done. Now can you see I've pulled it out and it's stayed as a nice spring. Look at that, look. Ba -ding! <laughs> Brilliant! So we can now put that on the back of our bow using glue dots. Now I ran out of glue dots didn't I? Let's just grab the other packet. If we put, I'm just going to pop a glue dot on the back of the bow and then take this in the middle, pop that on there, there we go. I'm going to pop another glue dot on just to hold it securely and then I want glue dots on the back of my bow so there's one and there's the other one. Okay so I've got one at each end, one in the middle. Now when you stick this on don't just plop it down because you'll end up with a very flat bow. To make your bow nice and full if you put your fingers in it so that it gives it a bit of shape then it moves this back piece in you see and you can actually get it so that you stick your ends down first and then put your middle down and it will help to keep your bow in shape that way so let's just pull those out of the way now if I push that down now can you see it stayed because it's tucked up underneath so it's helped to keep it in shape. So put those on and we're just going to snip off those ends just to tidy it up and there we have it. Some nice curly whirly ribbon or curly whirly cord I should say. There, make it a bit more in the middle. Curly whirly cord with our bow on our card wishing a lovely person a Merry Christmas. Oops, I flattened my bow out. Get up there, there we go. There, ah, how's that? That looks very nice, isn't it? I'm very pleased with that. Hope you like that, hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you enjoy making the card along with the matching post-it notepad holder with its missing red pen. All of the products that I've used to make these you can buy through my website at www.thecraft. <laughs> I nearly gave you someone else's address then. <laughs> www.thecraftyspark.co.uk <laughs> Now there will also be a link to the blog post that goes with this video in the gumpf underneath the video. If you have a look there you'll see the link to the blog post that's actually got all the measurements on for the card and there will also be the link 
to take you to the one for the post-it note cover as well. Okay, so until next time, I shall see you soon. See you later.